Why is the next gen mail handler necessary and why will be the classic mail handler deprecated? Before we start going into details about how the handler works, we think it's important to talk a bit about why coming up with the next gen mail handler was necessary and why the classic mail handler will be deprecated. The classic mail handlers were created in a way that it is dependent on Jira in the processing of incoming emails. This proved to be an issue because the mail processing was on numerous occasions unacceptably slow. As you can see based on these screenshots, the struggle is real and these are just a couple of examples that could be solved by switching to the next gen mail handler. Another pain point for our users is that the classic handler is project dependent. This means you could only map one project to one mail handler and there had to be specified in Jira administration's incoming emails. This resulted in people having dozens, even hundreds of mail handlers and administration was in many cases to our customers a nightmare. We wanted to provide a solution that did not have this issue, therefore we created the next gen mail handler. And with that, let us see how else they differ in their way of working. Key differences between the classic mail handler and the next gen mail handler. As I previously mentioned, the classic mail handler was created in a way that it is fully dependent on Jira in the processing of incoming emails. This means that it is Jira that has access to the mailbox through its IMAP server settings in Jira administration, incoming email, and it's not us. After Jira reads the inbox and downloads the emails, only then does it pass them on to us. The way Jira processes the incoming emails, however, is that it reads the inbox every minute, if the interval is set to one minute, and it does so every time for the whole mailbox. This makes the processing of incoming emails and creating issues or adding comments very, very slow. On the other hand, the next-gen mail handler provides us with the opportunity to handle the whole email processing by us. In addition to the mail handler, we've created our own incoming mail settings that only works with the next-gen mail handler and works quite differently compared to the classic mail handler. Our email processing strategy is based on the email account not being read from the first email that is in the mailbox, but from the last email we processed in the last minute. So while Jira iterates through all emails in the inbox every minute, we remember when we finished um, reading last time and pick it up where we left off. Another key difference is, that I already touched upon, scope dependency. In the next gen mail handler, any number of scopes can be set up by simply using conditions. This behavior makes administration easier as you do not need as many next gen mail handlers as you did classic mail handlers. Some of you might already guess that it also means the end of field rules and you are absolutely correct. Field rules are used with classic mail handlers to write incoming emails to projects, give values to custom fields, run workflow transitions, and block emails based on the incoming mail's content. These actions, and many more, are still available in the next gen mail handler, but they have their own actions, which I'll show you in the next section of our call. Main components of the next gen mail handler and how they work. There are four main components in the next gen mail handler. This is filter emails, find issues for email, if issue found for email, and if issue not found for email. In the filter emails section, you can determine which emails should or should not be processed by the mail handler. Bulk emails that were previously included in the Jira side administration of the mail handler can be filtered by the handler if the incoming email has the preference bulk headed included. The same way, delivery status notifications and order submitted emails may also be filtered, as well as large emails for which you can set the size of the emails to filter. Emails sent from the Jira system, 
your own instance, or any other for that matter, can also be excluded from processing by adding their respective actions to your list of filters. It is also possible to filter emails based on the incoming email's attributes, such as emails sent by unknown addresses and certain sender and recipient addresses. The filter emails by email attribute action is equivalent to the block and bounce field rules in the classic mail handler. The difference is merely setting a template to be sent to the sender. If you select a template here, it will be considered a bounce email. Here, for example, you can let the sender know if they send their email to the wrong address and redirect them to the correct address. If you do not set a template, the incoming email will be ignored, unprocessed, and be displayed in the incoming mail log labeled as skipped. You can also find these emails in the incoming mail queues filtered out tab. The second menu in the NextGen Handler is the Find Issues for Email section. In Jira's mail handling process, the first tier of finding emails is looking for the issue key in the email subject. With our NextGen Handler, you don't have just the option to keep this method for finding emails, but you can also add two other methods. First is to find issues by references in the email headers, and then you have the Find Issues by JQL option. The Find Issues by References in Email Headers option works the same as leaving the Ignore Issue ID in Email Headers disabled in the classic mail handler. This means that if the incoming email does not have the issue key in its subject, but the email is a reply to an outgoing email sent from your instance, will still be able to find the issue and comment on it if that's the course of action you chose to implement. The Find Issues by JQL section equals to the override default issue lookup handler action in the classic mail handler combined with the connecting field rule. This complex configuration option can help you find issues and link the incoming email to them based on a combination of the incoming email's attributes using a regular expression and a JQL that describes the issue the best. When the email is found, based on this section setup, the if issue found for email section takes over and carries out whatever actions you add to your list. If the issue is not found, however, you can decide what to do next in the if issue not found for email section. It's important to note that these actions are the same and are available for both when the issue is found and when the issue is not found. These actions enable you to add comments to the issue, to update existing issues by setting fields and saving email participants, execute workflow transitions, you can send auto-reply emails to the email's participants or save senders and recipients, you can set fields in new issues, include conditions based on which you can determine and define a more sophisticated email processing strategy, uh, you can create a new issue and link it to an existing one and create new issues. The details of the email processing can be found in the incoming mail log and we suggest that you turn on debug mode in the mail handler for a detailed analysis of your incoming emails. With all this information, let's see how much time and effort it takes for me to set up a simple email processing configuration for an existing Jira service management project. How to set up a simple next-gen mail handler for your Jira service management project. This is just a disclaimer, I have already had a mailbox created for demonstration purposes, the project was created in advance and all my permission settings were set up as they should be in order for this to work, just as it would be required in Jira. First of all, let me state how important it is to know that you should not have more than one mail handlers looking at the same mailbox unless you have email writing based on the email's content. Because of this, 
I do not have any Jira side IMAP connections and mail handlers set up, and I do not have any email requests enabled in the project. When this is confirmed, I'll start off by creating a mail account in the app by pressing the add button and enter all necessary fields just as I would do in Jira. One of the benefits of using our app is that you can freely configure the email processing to decide what should happen to the email after it's downloaded, if the processed email should be read or deleted from the mailbox. Testing the connection, you can see if it's successful or not and save the mail account. The mail account will be created as disabled for safety reasons, but you can enable it straight away so that it shows up in the mail handler creation. When I'm done with this, I'll just navigate to the mail handlers and create a new next-gen handler, giving it a name and setting the mail account we've just created. Just as in the classic handlers, it is required that you have a default reporter. In this case, I'll make my admin user default reporter. It is important that your default reporter has necessary permissions to create issues and comments and that it, this is an agent. I cannot emphasize enough, your default reporter has to be an agent at the moment. Just click on debug mode to generate additional logging that can help you troubleshoot issues if needed. Click save and move on to configuring it. For our simple solution, I'll leave the filter email section as it is and add the references finder for the second section. If the issue is found, I'd like to leave a comment by only including the latest reply as a comment, another whole email thread, so I'll include this regular expression in my comment settings. But as you can see, this example is in Hungarian, but you can set it to any other language as well. If the issue is not found, however, I want to open a request in my service management project for a new feature, so I'll add the create issue action and enter the scope. I'll attach the original email as an email file as well and save it. You can see that the save senders and recipients action is added automatically. I'll open it for editing and save all customers as request participants and all users with permissions as watchers. I'll add my mail account in the exclusion tab in order to avoid any loops and enable public sign up for good measure. When it's done, I'll set my priorities to high whenever the email body contains the expression priority urgent and we'll set a default value whenever this expression is missing to minor. This is my full configuration. Let me show you how it works. First, I'll send an email to the mailbox. I'll just put the mail account address here. The subject can be whatever test subject for the webinar. And I'll just put the body down for priority urgent and send the email. Now it's just going to take a minute or two um, for my Outlook mail account to receive the email. And then it's going to set it to read from unread. Now you can see this is unread and then it should create an issue. You can see that it's now being marked as red and you can navigate to our incoming mail queue to see if the email is being processed and you can see if the email is received and being processed in the incoming mail log. Here you can see the subject is the same, we've got the debug logs now and I'm just going to open SMP6 that I've already tried opening here so I just need to refresh it. You can see that the priority is high due to the description which was the email's body being set to priority urgent and we've got the original EML file as an attachment added to the request. You can see that the comments section is empty so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send another email 
which is going to be actually a reply to an outgoing Jira notification. And that should create a comment. So this is the Jira notification that we've received for our last email, which has created SMP6. We're just going to press reply here. You can see this is the full email. I'm going to just put down, this is my comment. And then you can see the rest of the email thread, which we're going to hopefully cut. <laughs> and this is the only thing that should be presented in the comments. So I'm just going to send it and be there with you in a second to see if the comments get added. We've received the um, reply email, as you can see here, that's been processed. It's now marked as red. And so we can go back in the issue, just press refresh and see it in the comment section. This is my comment, it's got added and it's without the whole email thread. It's just my comment. So I think um, this just shows that the very simple mail handle works. And I believe this concludes the end of our video recording. I'll be back for the Q&A session now and I'm looking forward to your questions. <laughs>